As the leaves change color and summer turns to fall, that can only mean Halloween is around the corner. In this movie, we'll get into the spirit by carving an illuminated chase scene into a pair of jack-o'-lanterns. Make sure to set the current project to the provided scene folder, then open the file Halloween Start. The scene consists of a small cabin featuring two display stands on a table. The stands have already been keyed to rotate 360 degrees every 6 frames. We'll create a pair of pumpkin models with 6 frame stencils cut out of them, then place them on these spinning stands to create the illusion of animation. Let's start by modeling a pumpkin. Create a polygon sphere, then translate and scale it up appropriately. Rename it Pumpkin1Geo. To shape it, switch to Vertex Component Mode and select the vertex at the sphere's top pole. Press the B key to turn on Soft Selection. This tool allows you to affect components around your selection using a gradient-based falloff. You can also access this tool through the Tool Settings. Hold B and drag the mouse to enlarge or shrink the falloff radius. Try to encompass the upper quarter or so. Now using the Move tool, translate the selected vertex down to shape the area connected to the pumpkin stem. The surrounding vertices within the falloff radius are also pulled down based on the soft selection's falloff curve. Repeat this for the vertex at the bottom pole, but with a slightly smaller radius. To add some ribs, turn off Soft Selection, then select every other edge loop running down the pumpkin vertically. Scale them out a bit. You can find plenty of reference images online for more help to refine the exact look. To create a stem, first select the top vertex again. Control right click and select Two Faces. This marking menu gives you options to convert your current selection to either the faces contained within your selected vertices or those around your selected vertices. Since we only have one vertex selected, choose Two Faces to select the faces around it. Then scale the faces toward the center until the outer edge loop is roughly the size of the stem. Open the modeling toolkit and activate it. Use the Extrusion Face tool to create a new set of faces. Translate them up. Press the G key to repeat the Extrusion command, then shape the faces to make the stem bend a bit so it's off-center. This will make the spin more obvious during animation. To soften the hard edges, select the stem's faces, Then in the Polygons menu set, select Normals Soften Edge. At this point, let's duplicate the pumpkin. Rename it Pumpkin2Geo. Translate both pumpkins onto their respective display stands. Parent each one to its respective stand so it rotates along with it. Next, we'll apply our stencils to use as reference for our carving later on. We've included two stencils in the downloadable scene files linked below. Each of them depicts a six frame run cycle for our Big Bad Wolf and Little Red Riding Hood characters. Select Pumpkin 1 Geo and apply a new Lambert material to it. Rename the material Wolf Stencil Mat. Click the Map button next to Color. Connect a file node to it, then set the image name to the included Wolf Run file. Make sure to display texture maps in the workspace. Repeat the process to create a hood stencil mat for the second pumpkin. 
Now scrub through the scene. As the stencil images pass by in quick succession, they give the illusion of the characters running on their respective pumpkins. To position the stencil, you can use the file's connected Place 2D Texture node and adjust the offset attribute. Or you can modify its UV shell in the UV Texture Editor. Don't modify its scale though, since we need to ensure the texture wraps around the pumpkin exactly once. We're ready to start carving. We're going to use the multi-cut tool to create an edge outline following the wool stencil in our first pumpkin. Before we start, we'll need to freeze the pumpkin's transforms since they can adversely affect the tool's ability to retopologize. Now select the multi-cut tool. Find a starting point on one of the wolf drawings and click the corresponding pumpkin's face. Notice that Maya automatically connects this point to an existing vertex. With the starting point in place, click on the next spot on the stencil. Continue adding new points across the stencil. Note that you can move existing points by dragging them. Or you can move the last created point by middle dragging it. Once you've completely outlined your stencil, the last point of your edge outline must return to an existing edge or vertex on the original geometry. In this case, we'll end it at the same vertex we began. Next, go to Vertex Selection Mode and select the Target Weld tool. This tool allows you to merge components together by dragging one to the other. We'll use it to merge these two vertices at the wolf's snout to close the outline. Now you can delete the linking edge we required at the starting point earlier. Repeat this process all the way around the pumpkin, and then again for the second pumpkin. Note that our cuts have created a lot of n-gons. In normal modeling situations, this is usually not a good idea, as n-gons lead to polygon distortions when deformed. However, since we won't be animating or deforming them in this case, it's okay to leave them like this. Also notice that the cuts we've made in the Red Riding Hood pumpkin retain the detail in the clothing creases. This is important to keep the proper silhouette of the character. For carving, we'll use two different techniques. For the wolf, we're going to cut right through the pumpkin and shine a light from the inside out. This will cast an eerie silhouette on the walls around the dining table. For Red Riding Hood, we're going to do a two-layer carve, so the image remains on the pumpkin itself. As the simpler of the two methods, let's start with the wolf. Go to Face Selection Mode, then select all the faces within each of the stencils and delete them. Create a new area light and rename it Pumpkin 1 Light. Translate it to the middle of the pumpkin and scale it up a bit so it produces enough light to fill the pumpkin's cavity. In the attribute editor, set decay rate to quadratic to emulate real light fall off and increase intensity to 15,000. Change the color to yellow to simulate candlelight. In the mental ray section, turn on Use Light Shape and set the type to sphere to emulate a light bulb or candle. And since we're done with the stencil, replace the pumpkin's material with the existing pumpkin matte shader included in the scene.
Then select the faces for the stem and apply the existing stem mat shader. Render the current frame with Mental Ray. The pumpkin successfully cast the wolf onto the walls of the room. Our second pumpkin will be slightly more complex. In a shaded carve, you can get three different color tones by either cutting all the way through the pumpkin's skin, cutting halfway through it, or leaving it uncarved. We'll apply a halfway carve to all of Red Riding Hood's clothing, and a full cut through for her skin. We'll do this using two different overlapping pumpkin objects. To create the extra layer of pumpkin, select all the faces on the model and extrude them. Make sure you're in world space and use the scale tool to scale out a bit. Like before, select all the faces that fall within the character stencils on the outer surface only and delete them. For any areas representing the face, arms, or legs, Delete the corresponding inner layer as well. Now we have our two pumpkin layers, but we also have these gaps between them. We can extrude the outer layer around each stencil outline inward to bridge the two. Apply the pumpkin and stem materials to our Red Riding Hood pumpkin. Notice how the inner pumpkin layer still appears black. This is because we extruded the original pumpkin faces outward, resulting in normals that face inward. Select all these faces and, in the Polygons menu set, go to Normals Reverse. While we have all these selected, let's apply the existing pumpkin pulp mat shader to them, since the inside of a pumpkin is generally a little brighter than its skin. Finally, duplicate the light we created for the first pumpkin and translate it into this one. Rename it Pumpkin 2 Light and reduce intensity to 500 for a softer glow. Open the Render Settings. In the Frame Range section, set End Frame to 6 to make sure we only render the first 6 frames. Now in the Rendering menu set, go to Render, Batch Render. Play the resulting rendered frames on repeat to see the character trace in action except the wolf seems to be running backward. This is because using the projection technique, we're actually casting a mirror image of our wolf on the walls. To fix this, go to frame 7 and select the wolf's display stand. In the channel box, set its rotate Y attribute to negative 360 instead of 360. Set a new key. Batch render again, and you can see your fairy tale properly brought to life. Now why not try this on a real pumpkin on Halloween?